Good morning. We continue our series of interviews with our amazing co-authors. Today's co-author is my friend and uh, an awesome coach, Kevin Gainey. We met with Kevin when we were going through NLP certification back in 2020. Welcome, Kevin. It is a pleasure to have you. Good morning. It's great to be with everyone. Good morning. So please share with us. Why did you say yes to Soul Parent Book Project? So the first reason is I have so much respect for you and the work that you've done and having gone through a lot of the trainings and other things with you, like some of it was just saying yes, because I'm like, I'm sure this is going to be awesome and I'm going to be a part of it. And then I was like, oh, what, what do I have to say about being a soul parent? Um, so the first reason is because you were involved, but then the second reason is, you know, I want to, I'm working on my own book and I'm like, you know what, let me do this in a smaller version with a multi-author book and get that experience from everything from start to finish for how the book project works. And then as I was working on it, you know, it became abundantly clear that I'm like, you know what, I think I, I think not doubting myself, but it just became more real of what I have to say can be valuable to people and can hopefully provide some inspiration and maybe guidance or tips or like, you know, you know, as Mary said, in one of our meetings, um, the other person that uh, Irina is working with, Mary Gooden, is, you know, even if one person hears what you have to say, then all of this has been worth it. Uh, if you can help one person. So I hope we, I know, I know we will help many, many more, uh, but being able to help people with that message and, uh, is, you know, those are the, the three reasons why I'm excited to be a part of this project. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for believing. Thank you for saying yes. You're the first person who said yes. So thank you so much for being on this journey. I'm excited what this is going to do and for spreading yeah. this message. And since this being your first book, what was your writing experience like? So most of my writing in the past has been writing from a standpoint of then doing training or speaking. Mm -hmm. So it was very different for me. Like it was easy to get everything out of my head. The editing was the hardest part. Uh, because I can be a little verbose sometimes. So trying to get it all out there and then whittle it down to the essentials, uh, but still make the points that I wanted to make and still, you know, share what I wanted to share. Uh, you know, I was able to do that. Uh, but the writing experience, you know, I think the only part that I really not struggled, but the part that there was internal tension was, I'm like, oh, I want to approach it from this way. I want to approach it from that way. What if I do it this way? And so I ended up doing like writing from three different ways and three different messages. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think the, probably the first version kind of jammed all three of those together. And I was like, well, that doesn't work. So then I had to go back and it was almost like I wrote three separate things. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I was able through the editing process to refine it and get it into, okay, here's the one thing this is what, if somebody reads this chapter, here's the one thing I want them to know. And here's the one part of inspiration and motivation that uh, I hope I can help with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I can relate. I, I had the same thing going with me. I would write one version and then another and a third one, and then taking different paragraphs and kind of making a cohesive kind of statement. Because I know when we start, we think, oh, what am I going to write about? I have nothing to say. And then you start writing and you get into so many different variations and versions and how you felt and when you were there and what kind of message you want to relate. So we're all full of stories. And sometimes, even though we didn't go, like we don't have a college degree in writing, <laughs> we have ex lived experience that we can portray in a book. And just like you said, if one person can be helped uh, by... Uh, reading the story it could hopefully could be a page in their survival guide and I know we're all different but I think we're all bring a wisdom a tip or solution uh, of something that we dealt with that helped us and maybe it can help somebody else right absolutely to, to me that one thing is always if I can inspire or motivate or even prompt someone 
to ask a question that they've never asked before. I don't want, I don't expect anybody to read anything that I write, especially, and be like, oh yeah, that's so true. Like I'm gonna do that. that that's <laughs> not that's not why I write, that's not why I teach. It's always to get people to ask their own questions. Um, you know, a lot of you know my background, a lot of it is, you know, who am I being? And so my chapter is what kind of parent am I being and what kind of parent do I want to be? I just want people to ask that question and then answer it for themselves because that's what lasts. If you just read something and somebody says, oh, do this, it'll last for a week or two, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, you know, of course, if you have ADD, it might last for like an hour, like I do. But like, <laughs> if they can ask that question, or any question and answer it for themselves and frame their parenting based on whatever that question is, because we can ask questions across all the different aspects of parenting. That's when it really begins to stick because you start taking your answers to a question and turning it into habits and intentions. And then that changes the trajectory little by little of the type of parent you can become and the type of parent that you want to become. Uh, so if I can just, if people can just, if I can prompt one person to ask that a question and look at something a little bit differently, change their model of parenting and their model of the world, then that is what I would feel like, you know what? Happy to serve. It worked out well. Yeah, thank you. What was difficult? Was there any difficulty in writing? Um, probably, probably the part where it was okay now it's time to you know i let my, to me the the difficult part was i wanted my um my ex-wife to read it mm -hmm. um and i let my kids read it uh, my kids are 19 and 17 so what i wrote in the chapter i wanted to make sure that i wasn't wearing you know rose-colored glasses or misrepresenting something uh, i wanted to respect their experience um because it's my story is about you know the personal growth and some of the challenges that i had you know some of those aha moments and so giving it to them that was probably the hardest part sending it off to the editor sending it uh, to you and mary and things like that that was easy like my audience was if if my kids and my ex-wife know where I'm coming from uh, and why I'm saying this and what what the story is. They are obviously are an integral part of the story, uh, but being able to share that with them and, you know, I guess it is a type of validation to hear that I wasn't making up a story in my head that wasn't accurate, uh, but it, it did resonate with them. And, you know, my ex-wife told me, she said, she goes, you're the growth is obvious from where you've come from and the intention is palpable. So being able to, you know, the, the kids and her both see the intention that I put into being a parent, uh, because even when we were married, uh, she often traveled a lot. So even though she was traveling 70% of the time, mm -hmm. I still felt like a single parent. And then of course, after the separation and divorce, you know, then I, was a single parent for a while but you know the, my kids are old enough and they drive now that they just come and go as they please and um yeah but he hearing that from the kids and her that you know this is something that we've seen change and grow and mature and the intention uh being palpable i think that was the key part of like okay you know so that was that was a challenging part but it's like a lot of things in life, the challenging part can also be the most rewarding. Um, so that was both for me. Awesome. And I think it's great that you, you were able to, you know, get your validation from people closest to you. And yeah. yeah. What kind of advice can you give to single parents? Oh my gosh. Um, be patient with yourself. Um, we are all a work in progress. We are all doing the best we can with what we have. And in the end, things do work out. 
And it is that intention and that, okay, what kind of parent do I want to become? What do I want this next interaction with my kids to be like? Um, because you don't have to plan out the whole thing. Um, because, you know, I, you know, you try that when you have a baby, um, you know, like we're going to do this, 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 and this. And then by week two, you're, you know, you're, you know what, they're still alive. We're doing great. Um, uh, you know, so, so the intention is to be patient with yourself, um, and just those small tweaks and improvements, uh, and kind of making the relationship, what you want it to be and realize that this isn't something you can force. It is every child is different. Uh, every child has their own um, kind of way they learn best, the styles for building the relationship and being able to adapt to that uh, and not being reactive uh, in everything. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I think you're so right that we all I call it, we read all these books before babies are born. You're going to be such amazing parents. But that, that manual is like you throw it up. I, I told somebody uh, the other day, I was like, you know what? I did all my, and, and I've heard this from somebody else. I don't know who originally said it, but I did all my best parenting before I had kids. <laughs> I'm so confident. So knew what to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that didn't last long. So, yeah. So my hope is for single parents that this book, you know, how we read baby books to prepare ourselves. Maybe we can read so single parenting book and prepare ourselves for single parenting. Yes. Yes. It, and, and I think it's because it is, it's, we think of parenting as a journey for, of the kids. I don't think we, there is many books about us as the parents not that we want to take the focus off of the kids but both can be true like parenting is a journey for us and we need to respect that Uh, and that's why i say give ourselves grace set the intentions ask what kind of parent we want to be uh, because we can't ignore our own health in any of the levels of health and expect to be the best parent that we can be for our kid or kids so yeah Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for coming on. And thank you. people, wherever you are, invite your friends. Invite, if you have single parents in your life, the book is launching just short, four days away, Friday, uh, yeah. December 9. <laughs> Sign up, come on in into the group. There are going to be raffles and giveaways, and there are going to be a lunch party on December 9. So have an amazing rest of your Monday, and I will talk to you tomorrow. Thank you, everyone. Bye.